We're here today with David Grobberman, CEO and Managing Director of Hiramed. David, thanks for your time. Thank you very much, it's a pleasure. Firstly, are you able to explain what is Hiramed? Yeah, so Hiramed um, is a platform and end-to-end -end solution, which includes a multi-sensor device um, connected to a smartphone app that enables expecting moms to monitor their pregnancy and the wellness of their fetus at home and connect this information with the physician or the health provider uh, to just get more of an insightful analysis of the well-being of the baby on a continuous basis. What led to the development of this product? So uh, yeah, it's an interesting personal story, not very dramatic, but my wife was pregnant. It was our third pregnancy. Uh, and it was a high-risk pregnancy, although on the lower range of high risk. But we just found ourselves a bit anxious and worried. So we came, we had to come over and over again to the physician or to the clinic just to get the preliminary uh, screening and the measurement of the heart rate of the baby. And then the idea was uh, conceived in a dual meaning with my baby boy, who is just turned six now. Uh, and we came up to the understanding that in today's world, it just doesn't make any sense. If you can do the same at home uh, and share this information with the physician, so you save a lot of time, both for yourselves, the expecting moms, as well as for the medical community. So you relied on or called on some personal experiences, but a skill set unique to this sector? Correct, so my background is um, in engineering, uh, me uh, mechanical, biomechanical and software engineering. And I've been doing that for about 15 years now, uh, providing services to med tech, Israeli uh, corporates and startups. So we've done that for quite some time now and being very fortunate to have a very diversified uh, project, multi uh, uh, cross industry kind of projects throughout many of the challenges uh, in the health tech sector. Uh, and then I hopefully I've been able to harness all these capabilities uh, and bring a technology which can replace this huge professional, very expensive devices that you have at the hospital uh, with a device for home use at $299 for the end user. This is more than just an idea though, isn't it? Well, yeah, sure. So now we are, the, the idea, it was an idea. It's been five years to develop and about $5 million invested in the company in R&D. So we've passed all the clinical trials, um, all the uh, biocompatibility uh, analysis uh, and so forth. So we have a medical CE approval and it's already been commercially launched in Israel in partnerships with um, Tiva, which is the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest generic pharmaceutical company in the world. Uh, and hopefully very soon, we're gonna deploy that further to Europe. Uh, by the second half of 2019, our plan is to have the FDA and further launch it in the US. And in terms of the rollout of this technology, how rapid do you think it could occur? Well, there's a huge wave now uh, that I believe that all stakers, uh, stakeholders are embracing, if it's the medical community or entities, as well as the consumers uh, of, uh, throughout all the healthcare industry. So we have a digital native uh, generation that are looking for solutions to come to their doorstep. So I honestly believe, and I'm being a bit cautious and conservative here, but I believe that within a year, we're going to see that out there practically almost each and every expecting mom will want to use this idea. And one example that I can give is that, you know, only uh, let's say 10 years ago, in order to get your blood pressure uh, measured, you had to, doc to go to the doctor's office. And it was very complicated and only a professional could do that. Today, you have pretty much in each and every home, you have a connected, very simple blood pressure monitor you put it on your arm, you press a button, and that's it. And this, is, this has become pretty much the standard today. So yeah, it might be a bit challenging because it's kind of a new opportunity or new offering here, uh, but we believe it's gonna, it's gonna catch like fire. And how does it work compatibly with the medical profession? Um, so 
Today, you have these uh, very sophisticated and professional and expensive devices that cost around 10,000 US dollars. Uh, and only a trained midwife or a physician can operate that at a, at a clinical setting. Uh, but still, the basic measurement that they take is the baby's heart rate for several minutes. That's it. That's all is necessary. Um, so if you can prove them, and we've done that through multiple clinical trials, and we've been working with Mayo Clinic, which is probably the most esteemed and acknowledged name in the, in the, in the medical industry, number one in the U.S. and probably in the world, that uh, already tested that technology, this technology, and they've been able to prove actually through a program that they have called the OB-NEST that, if, that you, the, the narrative was that uh, pregnancy is not an illness, it's the ultimate expression of health. So pregnant women, as much as possible, should be kept outside of the hospital. And they've proven that they can lower or reduce the average number of in-clinic visits from about 14 to less than eight. So just think about the time that is saved for the expecting moms, but particularly for, for the um, professionals and the cost that is saved because of that. So as long as the outcomes of the pregnancy are at least as good as, and potentially maybe even better, and as long as you keep expecting moms and young couples he uh, happy and satisfied and reassured, then, you know, all, all sides of the equations are, are, are happy to embrace that technology. You currently have a prospectus open for an right. IPO on the ASX. What's the reason for coming to the ASX and what do you believe funds secured through the IPO process will give the company moving forward? Yeah, so it's, it's been extremely exciting, quite of a journey. Um, we've done some private equity. We had uh, uh, external funding, uh, internal and external funding uh, in the company before. Uh, we were also leveraged by the Israeli government, uh, which is very interesting. We have a project in Israel where uh, if you put a dollar, then the Israeli government leveraged that by an additional dollar for innovative startups. Um, and now we decided to come to the ASX uh, because first and foremost, we see the, we see the Asian market as a very, very substantial market for us. Um, China, obviously, Indonesia, uh, India, which is not far. Uh, and we believe that headquartering here in, Aust in Australia means a lot to us and can be, yeah, be placed as a perfect uh, outreach to go out there to, to the Asian market. On top of that, as far as we understand, and we get a very good feedback from investors and from the ASX, the ASX is very open to early stage startups um, as long as there is a, a concrete uh, commercial success already uh, and, and a venue to exactly how to deploy uh, the, the commercial uh, business model further. You've been able to build a strong relationship with insurance companies in Israel. Are you able to explain the relationship but also the purpose? Sure, so um, it was very interesting for us to learn that uh, insurance companies target pregnant women because it's a very healthy population early in life they are about to expand the family uh, and their analysis shows that there's almost a single time in life when you reconsider which comp which insurance companies uh, is best for you so there's an actual fight the, uh, on pregnant women and, and early uh, couples who gives the wider benefits for pregnant women um, so for uh, an insurance company to reimburse our product uh, and come up to pregnant women and say, hey, we support you, we're innovative, we're early adopters, that's exactly the venue that they're looking for, the angle that they're looking for. Uh, so today we are reimbursed by 75% of the cost of the device with all three leading uh, AGMOs, which are a combination of insurance companies uh, and healthcare providers in Israel. Uh, and we believe that because the feedback is so positive, we're going to deploy that further to insurance companies in the US and in Europe. And in terms of Teva, are you able to share how that relationship works? So um, Teva is the, uh, one of the largest generic pharmaceutical companies in the world. Uh, and as far as we know, it's a part of a trend that is called Beyond the Pill. So these big pharma companies are looking for the next kind of engagement with their 
potential future patients or potential future clients. Um, and r the relationship with Teva started with the fact that they're going to be an exclusive distributor in Israel. So they've already committed to a minimum of 15,000 uh, units just for Israel at the starting point, generating uh, about $2 million in revenue, US dollars in revenue for Heramed. Uh, and we believe, again, we can cookie cut this model uh, and either with Teva or other uh, pharma companies throughout the rest of the world. Exciting times ahead for a well-established company with strong technology and a great management team. David, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.